Tonight at 9, Seeking Justice, another vigil for the missing Virginia mother who vanished months ago. She hasn't been found. Her husband is heading to trial soon. The latest from loved ones tonight. Three people shot near Howard University. The open investigation tonight and a scare not far from where students and alumni celebrated a milestone homecoming weekend. And curbing late night crime, the effort in one Maryland County to ramp up security at businesses. Lingering questions about cost and the timeline for residents to weigh in. Degrees above the average high temperature and nine degrees below the record. How long would this heat start to increase across the DMV? And we're stretching your dollar. Another DMV grocery price check. How 10 pantry essentials fared to start the week at Walmart, Giant, and Safeway. You're watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Good Sunday evening. Thank you for joining us for DC News Now at 9 o'clock. I'm Ben Dennis. We begin tonight in the district. That's where three people were reportedly shot near Howard University overnight and not far from where many were celebrating for homecoming weekend. Police say this happened around 1:50 this morning on 8th Street Northwest. It's their officers found two women and a man who were shot. They were sent to the hospital for their injuries. We're told all in stable condition. That investigation is ongoing. Well, in Maryland, today marks one year since a 56 year old man disappeared in St. Mary's County. Officials are continuing their efforts to locate Daniel Lewis Edwards. They say he was last seen leaving a construction job site in California, Maryland. Over the year long investigation, detectives determined that there were suspicious circumstances surrounding his disappearance. If you have any information, you're asked to contact the St. Mary's County Sheriff's Office. That number is on your screen. We've got an update to the story we told you about last night. Police have now identified the man who died in Alexandria. Police responded to Manor Road around 750 last night for a report of shots fired. Later, officials determined 23 year old Carl Harris had taken himself to the hospital. That's where he died. The medical examiner is working to determine the cause of death. The time is 9.02. Over to forecast with meteorologist Derek Bone. He's in for Scott Sumner. Got a live look at Reagan National. Maybe some folks headed back home to start the work week, Derek. Yeah, we saw temperatures today nearly 9 degrees above the average high temperature for this time of year, but also 9 degrees below a record high. Temperatures as we head about this week will start out into the um, upper 70s, but eventually will rise up into the 80s. Now, I don't think we'll hit uh, record high standards by any means, but we do have, of course, some warm days ahead, and temperatures are going to be well above the average from now until probably November. We're looking at, of course, uh, current conditions. We're at 60 degrees and relatively clear south wind at around six miles per hour at the current hour dew points at 48 looking at, at those temperatures to fall overnight. We're looking at temperatures across the region. They are into the 50s as well as the 60s at this current moment. We're at 61 Hagers down 51 compare that to Martinsburg 52 moving over towards Frederick 50 in Waldorf 53 in Lexington Park this evening as we head throughout the evening temperatures will fall down into the 50s as well as the 40s, but eventually how those highs will rise close to 80 once we go throughout your Monday. As we head into our Monday, we're going to start out the morning with temperatures into the upper 40s and lower low to mid 50s across the region. So definitely be sure to have the jacket as you head to work. As we head in towards the afternoon, things will warm up quite a good bit, especially by three o'clock in the afternoon with those temperatures into the upper 80s around the region. Should be a pretty nice day to be out and about, and those warm temperatures will likely increase as we continue it into Tuesday with a high temperature of 81 degrees. All right, Derek, we'll see you in just a few. Meantime, new details tonight. D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser just formally DC requested City Council approve the financing General agreement to revitalize Capital One Arena. Now we know the new details, including the purchase price of the arena and lease agreement to keep the Wizards and Caps in town. Bowser's request was made Friday. It says the city would purchase the arena for $87.5 million and charge yearly payments between $1.5 million and $2.3 million to Monumental Sports, who owns the Caps and Wizards. The buying price is reportedly included in the $515 million deal to keep the teams in the city. Council approved that deal in April and that amount. DC's financial officer says money is sufficient for the coming budget years to make these payments. 
Council will still have to consider Bowser's request. Well, a boar's head plant in Virginia at the center of that deadly listeria outbreak is again being investigated by the feds. The U.S. Department of Agriculture's Inspector General has opened an internal probe into how the agency handled violations reported at the plant. Investigators will look into whether inspectors responded appropriately to dozens of troubling reports of problems there. They included mold, insects, dripping water, and meat and fat residue on walls, floors, and on equipment. All right, Prince George's County leaders tonight, they are trying to prevent late night crime and keep residents safe and businesses from being vandalized. But the council is looking to pass a new bill requiring some businesses boost their own security. The bill would require more security at businesses open between midnight and four in the morning. Council member Crystal Orieta says that could include more lights, cameras, and training for security. While she says the bill is long overdue, not everybody's on board. So the concern from the membership at the Maryland Retailers Alliance is about the cost of compliance for this, the lack of clarity around uh, the parameters that could impact businesses, and the lack of consistency. So the goal really is not to penalize the businesses, but say you have to be part of the solution and take the time to work with the police to figure out what the standard should be. There are ongoing community questions about how it all gets paid for and by who. The council hopes to hold a public hearing before taking a final vote next month. Our DC News Now is your local election headquarters. Maryland early in person voting starts on Thursday. That's where the U.S. Senate seat is a highly watched race. The latest polls show Democrat Angela Osterbrooks leading over Republican Larry Hogan by nine and a half points. Osterbrooks says despite the numbers, she continues to see this is a tight one. While Hogan says he's used to being the underdog. We chatted with a political analyst who says it's likely a challenge for Hogan to run during a presidential year. Larry Hogan has never run in a presidential general election. But he's never run with a Democratic presidential candidate at the top of the ticket. For more on the Maryland Senate race, head to our website, dcnewsnow.com. All right, in Virginia, data is showing a historic amount of voters have already cast their ballots early. DC News Now's Haley Milan digs into those numbers for us. The numbers indicate that early voting is becoming the norm for many Virginians. Just look at Fairfax County. On Saturday, more than 15,000 people took to the polls there, marking the busiest day of early voting ever. Now, in total, more than 1,018,000 ballots have been cast in the Commonwealth this election. That's about 300,000 votes short of the general election in 2020. But keep in mind that that election came amid the COVID pandemic when many people were avoiding crowds and public places. Most people are opting to go to their polling places with 70% of those early voters casting a ballot in person compared to 269,000 who voted by mail. Now to make things easier for you, Fairfax County has added 13 additional satellite voting locations where you can vote between 1 p.m. and 7 p.m. on weekdays and 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Saturday and then 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. on Sunday. More on that on dcnewsnow.com keyword search Virginia voting. I'm Haley Milan, DC News Now. All right, thanks to Haley. Turning pages, your next trip out of Reagan National could get a whole lot easier for several destinations. That's because there are some plans to add five new daily flights to and from National. They include direct flights to San Diego, San Antonio, Vegas and Seattle. The new flights have been a point of contention, though, among local leaders who have concerns about overcrowding at DCA after several near misses at the airport. But flyers we spoke to say that they welcome the news. A little more crowded, but it would be great for people. The average person, uh, I think it's great. Good idea. The U.S. Department of Transportation will take comments from the public about the proposed additional flights until October the 30th. Well, it's back for another year in the district. They hosted the annual Turkish Festival downtown just today. All the fun of the festival brings together more than 20,000 visitors. Best one in every single year. It features classical Turkish dances. You just saw it. Traditional cuisine from local vendors, including Turkish tea and coffee and handmade crafts. This year marks the 21st year of the festival.